Hello, my friend. Glad to see you made it. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is alive. And welcome to the Gospel Hour with David. You know, we're on there online and we're doing all our, our spiritual warfare, right? And there's this great battle going on. The, the, the dark force and the, the, the light force, right? We have the force and the dark force. And we need balance within the force in order for us to have peace and it's not just peace for myself and, and that's where the peace begins but th that peace in myself permeates throughout all our neighbors, our countrymen, our friends, family, workplaces, wherever it may be. Today we're going to be going over Luke chapters 20 Three. I want to give you some power, guys. If you're out there and you're doing your spiritual warfare and all those things, I want to give you a little bit of power. Today I got Kato 10 gs here with me. Hey, I want to make a special shout out also to uh, Angel Ivy. Hey, right? Angel, uh, thank you very much for all your faithfulness and, and sticking with me throughout all these years and all this time. And, and you know... I just want to acknowledge you, and I've always seen all the good things that you have done and support you have shown me by sharing the videos, by, by, by believing that if God so wanted to, He could speak through me. And not just me, but He could speak through anybody He so choose. And I thank you for that. And Cato, well, I love you. <laughs> You're very special, you're very good, and I thank you too for your support and all the love you show me and hanging out with me right here. So, that being said, let's round her up. And Michael, thank you Michael, and Karen, Karen Webb, thank you. Thank you guys all for uh, sharing the word, sharing the message, and not just sharing it, Putting it to, to work within your own life, you know. I, I, I don't have to see the fruit. It is God who knows all, and He sees the fruit. And He knows what you're doing. And, and God is well pleased with you. All of you. And so am I. Anyway. Chapter 23, Book of Luke. Here's the empowerment I want to give you. I want to give you power. Right? we got power... To, to walk over the serpent, walk over the devil. Right? We have power to cast out demons. We have power and, and dominion. And, and that's what I declare over you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray, I pray for the glory of your kingdom to shine forth through our world today. I ask that you would anoint my voice. You would fill my heart full of love. And mercy and grace. I'm an open vessel for your will here today. I know, Father, wherever I am, there you are. So gather with us. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in my heart. Transform us today to the power of your Holy Spirit. Speak to us. Open our eyes my heart and my mind, to receive that wisdom without rebellion. In the holiest of all names, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, we found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us the tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And so they begin to gather together everybody, and they take him before Pilate, who is the high governor of the land, who is a Roman officer, right, in Jerusalem. And they begin to accuse him of all kinds of things. And that very thing they accused him of, of him claiming to be a king, a higher power than Rome itself, 
it, it, it is a threat to Rome. And that, in Roman law, is a capital offense and it requires crucifixion. That that's a crucifixable offense. It's a big no-no. You don't say anything bad against Rome and you definitely don't claim that you are the king of Rome and not just the king of Rome but the king of Jews because the only reason Herod is the king is because the governors of Rome, Caesar, appointed Herod to be king. He's not an actual Jew, but appointed. And so they says, well, bring this guy in. Right? And a, a guy dressed basically in rags, a, a guy dressed in sackcloth walks in and, you're the king of the Jews? You said that. Who are you? Who do they say I am? Hey. It's telling the truth. What is the truth? Jesus says everyone who hears my voice hears the truth. I don't see no fault with this guy. You guys are nuts. I don't see nothing wrong with this guy. He says, you're even a Jew? Are you from Galilee? And after he finds out he's from Galilee, Jesus goes. He's been sent to Herod. Herod is ruler or governor over Galilee. He's governor over Jerusalem. Go over there to the Jews, right? To the Galileans. Nobody knew where Jesus was from. Nobody really knew nothing about Jesus. Only thing they really knew was what they had heard and what the people were saying about him. But they didn't know him personally. They didn't know anything about him through their own experience. So he goes to Herod, and there Herod hears that Jesus, that, that, and it's not just that Jesus, that the Christ, that the Messiah, that that guy John had been talking about, right? He, he knows John. Jesus, he's excited. Oh, that guy John had been preaching about. Yeah, you know, and John tormented me. It's all that preaching, and all John kept saying was about, you know, is that one who comes after I, when he comes. Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire to those who hate Him and the Holy Spirit to those who love Him. He's all excited and there He is and He's questioning Him with all kinds of questions. Show us a miracle. John told me. I heard everything about you. That's all He talked about was the Christ. Are you Him? Are you the Christ? Who are you? Who are you? Tell me who you are. John tormented my wife so much for months. I offered, I offered her daughter half my kingdom. And yet she chose John's head. And I gave it to her. Are you the one he talked about? Because he told me you were going to come and rescue him from prison. And I beheaded him. Show me your miracle. One miracle, and I'll let you walk free. Just show me one. There's lots of questions, questioning him and questioning him and begging him. Show me a miracle. Show me something so I know you're the one John talked about. John, I know. I beheaded him tormented me, day and night. You're the one. I want you to see something in this story. Not just the story, but chapter 
23. This is the power I think every one of us needs to know. It, do we, like, do we love Jesus? Especially if you're a believer. Do you love Jesus? Do you love God? And, and maybe we do, and we don't know what that means when we say we love God, we love Jesus. Because I want you to see something here in chapter 23. It's our sin. Here they're mocking him. Herod dresses him with a piece of purple. A purple thing, you know. He don't beat him down. He don't do anything. He dresses him in all these fine clothing and, and purple and scarlet, red. Very expensive clothing. Clothed him like a king. They all began to mock him. This is the king of the Jews. And Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. Jesus said nothing. Didn't defend himself. Me and God know the truth. Know the truth about my identity. Know the truth about who I am. Know the truth about whether or not I talk to him or not. He, he knows the truth about if I'm lying about it. God 100% knows the truth as if I'm standing here naked today. And God knows that. Cato is asked this question. My love, I read the whole Luke and the name Barabbas call attention. Yeah. Barabbas. The name Barabbas, son of father. It's the Hebrew name, son of father. Mocking Jesus. They don't know anything about him. All they know is what they've heard. Here he is standing in their presence. Not defending himself in one way. Herod sends him back to Pilate. He says, I... I can't find nothing wrong with him. When, when he comes back to Pilate, Pilate has like this great relief because he had heard also many things about Jesus. And then he comes back mocked and disgraced. And he didn't perform any miracles for Herod. They, they had enemy. They, they weren't buddies. And then all of a sudden, they were friends. He was like, all of a sudden, Pilate wasn't so afraid. Right? Questions Jesus more. Who are you? Why are you here? Are you a king? He says, I am. Right? See, Jesus was not the king of the Jews. They said he was. They began to accuse him of all kinds of things. They said, he said, and he was going about telling everybody he was the Christ. Yet Jesus himself told the disciples, when they said, you are the Christ, so don't tell anyone that. Don't tell anyone. It is God our Father who unveiled that to you, who revealed that to you. I didn't tell you that. Men didn't tell you that. God told you that. But I tell you, don't tell anyone. 100% everything was at the command of Jesus. He commanded over demons and devils, bad behavior, the most wretched and the most vile. Pilate says, I have the power to let you free, man. Defend yourself. Jesus says, you don't have no power over me. Whatever power has been given to you has come from above you. And who has the greater sin? He has the power to kill me? You? The power above you 
that gives you the authority to kill me. He says, I'll have the guy flogged. Beats him down, whips him up. Hey, there's many witnesses, many people accusing him of all kinds of things. They ask him, are you the Christ? Just plainly tell us right now, are you the Christ? Are you the one we've been hoping for? Oop, computer didn't set down, right? All right, set down. Here we go, we're back. You're the one we're hoping for. And he says, I am the Christ, plainly. And you will all see me stand at the right hand of God with glory and with power and all the angels of heaven. And they tore their clothes in anger. This guy's blaspheming. He's claiming to be God. He's claiming to be not the king of the Jews, but he's claimed to be the king of heaven and the king of earth. Spit in his face, pull out his beard, beating on him, hurting on him. Beat him up. Let's crucify him. Pilate says, I want to let him free. He isn't worthy of death. And I don't believe you guys. I don't believe he is the Christ. I want to let him free. I don't believe he is the king of the Jews. I want to let him free. And then Jesus is offered to the people. Offered. He freely offers them. He says, Jesus, look, look how I have so, so much in control I am, Jesus. Pilate, speaking to Jesus, Pilate says, I have Barabbas. And I'll let him free. I'll let you free. There's no way they can choose Barabbas. He's a murderer. And a rioter. And a drunkard. And a dirty, nasty wretch. There's no way they're going to let him free. He says it is custom to release prisoner. And I give you an option. I, I give you a choice. I give you a choice. This is Pilate. Governor of Judea. Jesus of Nazareth, whom you all call the Christ. Or Barabbas, son of the Father, who is a murderer, a rioter, an awful person. They say, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Give us Father of the Son. Or Son of the Father, excuse me. Give us. But this Christ fellow, this Jesus fellow, we don't know him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Kill him. As they're heading out, Jesus is no longer able to carry his own cross. And so they find a man in the crowd, Simon of Cyrene. And they bring him in and carry his cross. He begins to carry his cross and Jesus says. And so the women are weeping, wailing and crying. They're crucifying him. He had the power to heal others, but he refuses to heal himself. He had the power to release his friends from prison, yet he refused to do it. He had the power to... He, he, he was supposed to be our Christ. He was supposed to free us from the enemy. They're screaming out and they're crying. And another man's carrying his cross 
And Jesus says, Why do you weep, O daughters of Jerusalem, if this is how you act? When the tree is green, and it is full, and it reaches to heaven, how will you act when it is cut down? There's nothing left but a stump. And the tree's dead and all dried up. No weep for those who, who, who believe the barren woman is cursed. Who believes those who suck at the breast are cursed. Because there would come a day there's a weeping so loud on earth that everyone will cry and all of them will say cover us and they'll run to the mountains and they'll say to the hills cover us cover us in dirt cover us they will hide under the rocks and they will hide under the earth and the day of the Lord appears to them They will hide. They will hide under false images on the internet. They will hide under false names on the internet. They will hide and they will cover themselves, but they will not hide themselves from me, says the Lord. For all the earth will be darkness. And there won't be no light to be seen at all except for my light, the light that's seen in me, says the Lord of heaven and earth. At the third hour the sun goes down and it's completely dark all the way to the ninth hour. All across the land, not just in Jerusalem, all across the land, Pilate wrote a, a letter to the, to the Romans back in Rome and said, you know, I need reinforcements. We crucified a man that was said he was the son of God. The earth turned dark. From the third, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, for three hours there was no sun. And I believe an uprising is going to begin. I need reinforcements. That's outside the Bible, but it exists. The soldiers were mocking him as they carried him out there. Crowned him in a crown of thorns. Hail to the king of the Jews. Hail to the Christ. Look how powerful. Hail. Mocking him and beating him with the stick and driving him and whipping him to move forward. Jesus says, this is patience, this is endurance. If when you're called into slavery, go. Yet, here we are today. If anyone calls me into slavery, I got my fists up. I'm ready to fight. If anyone threatens my freedom, I got my fists up. Ready to fight. If anyone threatens my Bible knowledge, I got my fists up. Ready to fight. I'm warring. I'm warring on the internet. I, I, I'm a cyber troll. I'm a cyber warrior. I'm, I'm on the force. I'm on the dark side. I'm a Jedi warrior. And I'm warring. How many of us still got up our fists? We're still fighting. Tell us who you are. Prove to us who you are. Prove to us your character and your integrity. So we hide behind our masks. If you are the king of the Jews, save us. Save yourself. If you are the Christ, Please save yourself. 
all the people, please do a miracle. Please do something for us. Please prove it to us right now, right at this moment, at this hour. You are the Christ. Prove it to us. They say, prove it to us. We want to know if you're the king of the Jews, you will climb down off that cross. You are devoured your enemies with a bolt of lightning from your eyes. And fire is going to come from your mouth and consume them all. If you are him, please do it. Come on. They hang him on the cross and they're mocking them. One of the soldiers says, please prove to us you're the Christ. He gives him sour wine and gall, vinegar, gall. If you're the Christ, put an end to all this. Free us all. Again, he's taken it, going to the slaughter, man. He's just being slaughtered silently. Not defending himself, not railing out, oh, you sons of bitches, why are you doing this to me? Not a word. Doesn't defend himself. How many of us are defending our pride, our worth, our value? How many of us fighting still. Jesus. So he says, if you are Elijah, call the fire from heaven. Call on it. It's dark. Remember, guys, it, it is pitch black for three hours. And they're begging him. They're begging him. Show us you're the Christ. They're terrified. You don't understand how they were terrified. There was mamas there. There was brothers there. Look at us today, how, how focused we are on MM fighting, on, on boxing, on, on football, on violence. Anything violence, anything war, anything that sheds blood. Look at the movies. Look at TV. We want to see blood today. They wanted to see blood in that day. They were gathered there. There was doctors. And there was lawyers. There was tax collectors. There was pilots. There was all kinds of people there. Generals, soldiers, children, grandpas, grandmas, all over. We begin to beg him. Show us a sign. Show us a sign. And finally, Jesus stands up on those nails to take one deep breath. And they're waiting patiently for that word. Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. They're blind. They're sick. If they belong to you, forgive them. With a breath, cries out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? Complete darkness. And she says, I you to your spirit, to your hands, right? Commence my spirit. And then he gave it up. He had the very power to give up his own spirit. And then the sun came back out. A great earthquake hit the ground. The temple veil was ripped open, the curtain that covered the holies of holies. Giant rocks were split in half. Earth was cracked open. 
tombs were broke open. People began to crawl out of their tombs as the dead froze to life and walked amongst the living. And they went into the towns of Jerusalem and began to terrorize them. The soldier who offered him the sour wine and gold, the soldier who pierced him in the side to make sure he was dead. said with great anguish yeah, I don't think you understand how the one when they're beating on their chest and just crucified the son of God said right on top of his cross this is king of the Jews Jesus Nazareth He wasn't the king of the Jews. He was God's son. The king of heaven. The king of earth. The king of heaven. The king of earth. While he was being rejected, spit on, defiled, abused, and broke down. Where are we? We say we were crucified with Jesus. Paul said with Jesus at the cross, yet it was us and our sins that crucified him. God gave us a command. Love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all our soul. And you love one another. The same way I have taught you, in the same way you wish to be loved. God gave every human being on earth a choice. And nobody has that choice but you. Because God gave that choice to you. Only you can give love away. It can't be taken. It can't be stolen. It can't be manipulated. Either you can give it away, or you don't give it away. But that's the choice God gave you. Love thy neighbor as yourself. And only you can give love away. That's the power God has given you today. That's the power I hope you have today. Faith in Jesus Christ. This is the power that only you have. That they don't have, that they wish they had. That's the power to forgive. That's the power to be rejected, violated, beat down, made to feel worthless, thrown on the ground like you were a piece of trash, yet still be able to forgive, still be able to love, still be able to find a way to believe in God, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the circumstances are. Jesus is the vine, the tree, from which we all find shade under, over. Book of Daniel says the tree grew so tall it got all the way to heaven. And then a rock, unfashioned by the hands of man, came down from a mountain, a great mountain, the Mount of Zion, and it struck that tree, and it fell. Come rolling down the mountain. It's the image and the tree from which we gained shade under. Being unwilling to be responsible for our own actions. finding shade under the opinions of human beings of the world of the things that are passing away or we finding shade in the hand of God which holds our sins to the cross 
for an everlasting reminder to everyone who walks the world. None are good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. But us, we failed to be good. This wasn't about our love for Christ. It's about God's love for us. Because when the fire came and fell from heaven to consume all the enemies, all the hatred, the violence, the betrayal, the rejections, and those who were participating in the bad behavior, all of them, everybody, right? Show us a miracle. A miracle. Don't heal my sickness. Don't heal my blindness. I don't want to walk. I want to see. And I don't want to hear. Show us a miracle. Show us a miracle. Right? And Jesus, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, his angel of death came in, like in the days of Noah, to wipe out all the earth and water, like in the days of Moses, when the death came in and took life. Pharaoh. Christ held back the wrath of God. All of it. Why you did that? Why we did that? Why I did that to him? Why I crucified him? He held back the wrath of God. So you're going to be punished every day you don't believe. Jesus came in the world not to condemn it. Those who seek condemnation see punishment. Don't seek to condemn your neighbor. What did he do? He freed a thief on the cross who said all of us deserve our punishment. Yet he is righteous and holy. When you get into your kingdom, remember me. This very day we will enter the kingdom. He let Son of Father free Barabbas. They chose a murderer to roll over them. Satan. The prophets of Jezebel. Baal. Slander. Murder. And hate. Oh Christ. Hold back the wrath of God. So they could see something they had never seen or known. The unimaginable, unknowing magnitude of God's love for humanity. Humanity. And it's still something we're fighting and we're wrestling with every day. When Jesus says, ask me anything in the will of God and it shall be done to you exactly as you believed it. 
our Father who lives in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today and each and every day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we too have forgiven all those who have sinned against us. Father, lead us away from temptation and deliver us all from the hand of the evil one. We ask these things through the faith that was given to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. What's stopping you from believing Christ's answer to your prayer is it is finished.